So, welcome to episode nine of the Sensitive Superstar series. And just as I'm waiting for anybody who is joining me live to hop on, just gonna give you a little bit of background to what this series is all about, why it started, what my kind of intention behind it is, and um, why I'm doing it. And, and the reason is because I support sensitive women who are looking to live their most abundant and intimate life. And to do that, it's all about kind of moving past our old stories, moving past heart and, and disappointment in the past, moving past that so you can get to a place of being really empowered and what I truly believe is that the world right now needs sensitive women who've got big hearts, who are ready to bring more joy and more peace and more love into the world around them. So that is themselves first and primarily it's got to start with you. Then into your relationships and your li your life around you and your community and then into the world around you because you don't have to look very far right now to see that what the world needs right now is compassionate women who have got their shit together and who are ready to bring more of themselves into the world so that it's like that Oprah Winfrey quote when she says, I wanna be so filled up with myself that I'm over spilling into the world around me. And that is absolutely spot on. It's this idea that you are so filled up with love and compassion and kindness and joy for yourself because you're really taking care of yourself, you're really taking responsibility for your own happiness, and that's spilling out into the world around you. So a bit, bit of a background, a bit more of a background about me. I am, um, I founded Soul Confidence about five years ago, and it's gone through um, transitions and grown as I've grown as well. But I got to a point in my life where I realised that I just was really disconnected with myself. Um, I really didn't like myself. I was very, very inauthentic. I really felt, I really felt like, I, I really felt like I was living a life that I hadn't signed up for. Now, on the surface level, everything was fine. I was quite confident. I had a good job. I was living in a city that I loved. I had great friends. And I wouldn't take any of that away. But what was actually going on for me was underneath, I was a seething mess of disgust and self-loathing and really, and really had the most toxic relationship with myself. So when I got to a point when I was like, right, I've got to do something about this. And we all get to that point at some point in our lives where we just feel shit enough that we do something about it or we do something different. And then at that point, like everything literally blew up and I did hit a really, really dark, really dark part of my life. But I'm so glad that I did because from that so much, so much happened and so much changed and so much, so many opportunities came into my life because I said, I'm ready now to truly love and learn to re-love myself and appreciate myself. So it started my own journey at that point, which very much then um, brought, like I say, all these incredible opportunities to me. And I really started on a journey of um, personal and spiritual development. I started training up as a yoga teacher. Um, I left my I left my job, literally decided I could, didn't like it anymore. Couldn't work in a place where I felt so, um, where, I, where I really felt like, I really felt like my values didn't match the, the company's values. I just decided I wasn't good at it. I just didn't want to do it anymore. Um, I went off, I had um, an incredible summer. I went traveling, had a, had a really fantastic time. Met my, met my partner at that point, um, started my own business. My first business was teaching yoga as well. There was so much going on. Um, and from all of that, soul confidence started to take place because it was what I was, it was how I was living myself. It was how I was learning and relearning to love myself. It was how I was learning to call in everything that I wanted. It was how I was learning to be connected with my body and start to listen to my body and move with my body and understand that my body had all these clues and messages from me, but I'd become so dis disenfranchised with my body and so disconnected with, with, with it, I just literally lived up here, that I had to really learn how to be back in my body again. Um, and I started to really like feel, I, I, felt, I felt amazing. And you know, I was bringing in all these amazing opportunities and there was lots of amazing things that were happening. 
and I was still doing the work every day and I still do the work every day because you know things change and you get new challenges that come up for you but I realized then that soul confidence was bigger than me it was bigger than what I was doing for myself it was bigger than 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 a really great way of living that I had stumbled upon and I realized it was it was it was meant for me it was my gift it was my gift to bring that into the world so I have had a ball I mean and I say a ball I mean there have been ups and downs and um, a whole lot in between like loads of different um, experiences in between but I've had a brilliant I've had a brilliant experience and a brilliant opportunity to bring this out into the world so my my dream is that uh, that soul confidence empowers many hundreds of thousands of women to relearn how to love themselves to really get how worthy they are of love to learn how to connect with their bodies again to learn how to bring in what you want into your life to learn how to have the most intimacy and the most abundance possible so I'm talking about taking a good life and making it an amazing life, okay? So part of the Sensitive Superstar series, I've been focusing every day on a different area that hopefully will help you to empower yourself and to start to feel more abundance and more intimacy in your life. And really, I'm talking about a, a, a new way of living where we own our sensitivity. So this is something that's really come into play for me over the last six months, which is learning on a deeper level about my about about my my power as a, as a sensitive woman owning that I am a sensitive woman not apologizing for it anymore and really moving into a place of like really knowing that this is my sense my sensitivity is my superpower and this is where all my gifts lie like my empathy my compassion my um, passion all of that comes from me being a sensitive woman so I'm talking about living uh, like living as a lion-hearted woman. So having this like fierce love in you that you know can do amazing amazing things in your in your experiences and for the world around you, but really looking after yourself. So it's no longer about burning ourselves out through overwhelm. It's no longer about burning ourselves out through frustration and resentment. It's no longer about like selling ourselves short in any way. is about moving into an empowered place where we are the guardians of our well-being. So, as I say, this sensitive, series, sensitive superstar series is really an opportunity for you to get to get to get an aha, to get some info, to get something practical that you can start to integrate and bring into your life straight away. So, what I want to talk about today is a really, really juicy topic and I think I'll probably come back to this and in fact I know I definitely will but it's this, it's this, this way of living, right, where we are owning ourselves as a sensitive woman and we're owning all of that joy and compassion that we, that we know is within us and we are looking at opening our heart a little bit more, a little bit more and a little more so that we can bring that out into the world around us. So it's about how you become more visible in your own life and therefore your relationships and your work or your business and then everything that goes alongside that, your creative life, everything. How you become more visible and move past that inevitable feeling of um, rawness. And the first time I ever spoke on stage about my experiences a couple of years ago when I spoke in front of a big audience about my experiences, I literally felt like my veins were on show. It was the most vulnerable, possibly one of the most vulnerable experiences of my life. But at that point, I was I had already made a commitment that my that my vulner my power lay in my vulnerability. My vulnerability was my strength, and and like I say, it's been over the last six months where I've learned about my cycle, and it really owned being a sensitive woman that that's kind of transformed that. So when I made that commitment, I literally like I say I felt like my vein my veins my everything was was on show, and it's that feeling on a big scale like that or on a smaller scale that can really um, be make or break for us, right? It can really be in that moment that we decide, yeah, I'm, I'm full in, I'm all in for this, I'm just going to go for it, or it, it causes us to retract and pull away. And on, in a, on a, um, not a smaller, but on a, a more kind of day-to-day, -day, a more day-to-day -day kind of um, parallel would be in our, our relationship and in particularly in our intimate relationship where we have those 
many, many micro moments of being vulnerable and those decisions about whether we are let ourselves be open and seen or whether we decide to retract and pull away. Now, there's I'm not making anybody wrong. I don't make myself wrong when I choose to retract, um, but it's about embracing those opportunities to be all in and to live lion-heartedly and to really decide, yeah, that's it, I'm, I'm, I'm all in for this, even though I feel like throwing up right now, okay? Like, even though I feel like, like this is like the most naked I've ever been in my whole life. So to get to that point, here's what I'm gonna suggest you do. And that is you look at what your big why is. So why do you want to be all in? Like, why do you want to live and be best friends with vulnerability? Why do you want to be more visible in your relationship, in your creative life, in your work or your business and in the world at large? Pick any of those sections and consider like, why, why do I want to be more visible? What's my big why? So for me, when I think about um, my relationship, it's because I'm fully, I want to have the most intimate relationship. So therefore I have to embrace being intimate and I have to be prepared for that to feel really like scary. So that's my big why. And for my work, it's like I've got, I'm here on a mission to bring, to bring soul confidence and to impact hundreds of thousands of women who who need to who need to hear this message, who need to live this way, who are ready for it. So that's bigger than my ego. So when I have moments like this, when I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to do a Facebook Live on my page, and like who like who's going to come and watch it, and what will the what what could the reaction be? Like I'm in a place now of of of, of having been removed enough from my ego that I'm close enough to my big why to know why I'm doing it. So that's my first tip to use. Just really know what your big why is for e for any of the areas of your life. When you're thinking, right, what, why, you know, what you're thinking, why do I want to be visible? I'm, if I'm prepared, like, to have those, like, th like, throw up moments, like, feeling like that, like, why am I doing it? And of course, the more you do it, you know, potentially the less, the less raw you'll feel, but you're, we're always going to have our stories. We're always going to have our past. So we've got to have done the work to have healed that. So that's probably the second part of that would be make sure that you're constantly clearing up your side of the street. So make sure that you're always surrendering. You're always using your practice. This is really important. This could probably be the third part, actually, which is like how supported are you? And your practice has to be like number one for me like i have to do some form of morning practice and if i don't i need something during the day to connect me with myself because when i'm showing up for myself in that way and showing myself that i care about myself in that in that way i know that i always have got my own back so when i get into that place of feeling raw because i'm taking something to a new level in my work or um, I'm, I'm calling in more intimacy in my relationship or I'm looking from I'm looking to feel more abundance in a certain area I know that I'm I've got my own back and that's so so important so yeah I'll just I'll leave it there for today because I think that's that's probably a really good place to kind of park this allow you to marinate in it consider your big why consider um consider how much support you give yourself through your practice and what your practice is looking like um, and really, yeah, really looking at, um, at, at, at what you, at what you want to bring in and what you're asking for and checking in with that. So it's been awesome. Um, if you are watching this on replay, please comment. Let me know if anything resonates with you. And if you know any other sensitive superstars who are, who really need to hear this, then please share this video.